Welcome back, everybody, to Rimworld. Yesterday, we finally got the ship hull finished. The floors are down. Uh, well, apparently, besides that one bit, but that's okay. The floors are basically done. Uh, just got to unforbid this side and get that finished off. We've got a residential zone on our ship now, so our people can live here, uh, eat here, have recreation without disappearing from our mighty vessel. Right now, I wanted to boot things off by getting poor old Ice Wolf resurrected, who every single episode... Uh, or every time we head into the game, he seems to die within a couple of episodes. This is quite literally one of the first raids we've had. Uh, one of the first combat situations. The poor guy gets killed instantly. So, let's go ahead and bring him back. The first thing we need to do is hit with a Reconstructor mech. Because, of course, he has desiccated somehow. Despite the fact he's been in a frozen... Uh, he's, he's been in a frozen tomb, essentially, since he died. So, I'm not entirely sure what happened there, but never mind. There we go. And now, we can resurrect him. Back to the seven people that we're supposed to have in the first place. Obviously, my mistake. Hopefully, eventually today, a quest to resurrect stake will come around at some point. There we go. Nice work. Uh, and then we'll be back to... Uh, we'll, we'll have the squad back together. And I'm really hoping we can get some recruits as well. Because like I said, I didn't want to I didn't want to leave this base. This base was... It was meant to be kind of a dry dock, a factory, to be able to produce ships as quickly as possible. Um, so we can really optimize the factory side of things later. Um... But, but the whole point of it was so that we could test out loads of weird different ship designs and you know, really really kind of expand on things via that. Um, so hopefully we can get some crew for the ship. Because right now we've got, you know, seven people and we're, we, we've got this giant doom ship. I feel like we're going to need seven people minimum living on the damn thing for repairs and piloting and, and kind of management. Since yesterday's episode, some people have uh, clarified some things with the heatsink. Specifically, I believe someone said that the... Um, the capital heat core that I was looking at are something like 66,000 um, of, of, of heat or something just ridiculous like that. Uh, let me see if I can pull up the actual value. And this is over Discord. Somebody told me this one. Um, so it sounds as if we're not going to need a massive amount if we're still using the more traditional save our ship weaponry. Granted, we're not exactly using the most traditional... Uh, we're not exactly using the most traditional save our ship uh, design. So somebody says with um, with nine capital heat cores and a couple of others from the Sailor Ship extension, they have up to 88,000 heat units. Bear in mind the ship we built last series had, what, 4,500? And that was with an entire chunk of the ship dedicated to it. We're talking like, I, I, I would argue, probably about a quarter of the ship dedicated to heat cores. So this sounds as if they are incredibly efficient. Um, so these ones are obviously much smaller. I wonder if it would be better to build one of these... Which takes up a 2x3 area. Oh, sorry, 2x4. Or whether it's better to build two of these. It's got to be this thing, though, right? Because look at the, the, the component cost by comparison. I mean, this costs 10 times as much. So maybe let's not go too crazy on these. Because they'll take a long time to build. And a long time to get the resources together. Two of them would wipe out our steel stash. Which, for the, the setup we've got, is impressive. Um... We'll just have to try and balance things, see how we go. First thing we want to get down is engines. Like I said, we're going to do internal engines this time around. So we are going to kind of dig out the sensor section and put a bunch of engines on that side. Uh, just so. App apparently with, with an, a, a newer update with Save Our Ship, maybe it's a planned update or something like that. Um, but apparently they are changing it so engines all will have to face in, the, in one direction. So what we'll do is we'll probably just dig out this side first and put all the engines facing this way. If we need more after that, we'll dig out this side afterwards. But we'll actually know it would make sense to do it the other way around, wouldn't it? Um, seeing as we haven't laid the floors here yet, but I think they've all had the components delivered. So this doesn't really matter either way. Um, but we'll put them on one side for the time being. That way, if the update hits kind of mid playthrough, it hopefully won't brick too much. I'm actually recording this episode slightly earlier than I normally would as well, simply because if I don't, it's going to be very, very difficult to hit the regular schedule. So yesterday's episode took me five hours to record. Uh, an hour of editing, about half an hour of rendering, half an hour of uploading. In total, we're looking at about six or seven hours per episode. Now, as I record these daily, so I can get your comments and feedback and whatnot, um, it means I'm very, very, very tight for time. Uh, so I'm recording this one a little bit earlier, just while we've still got, you know, just shitloads of buildings. So, like, I know what I'm doing at this point, um, so this bit shouldn't be too tough. But when we're up in space and when we have to kind of plan out our guns and especially the Arcotech stuff uh, from from Save Our Ship extensions, that's when I'm probably going to need some feedback on that stuff because that seems like it's... Um, it adds a lot of complex endgame stuff that we'll have to we'll have to balance quite nicely if we want to get the most out of our ship. Um, oh, one feedback I did get in response to yesterday's episode actually is that the um, there are powered uh, or, or shielded airlocks. Yeah, there we are, shielded airlocks. Right. Um, 
Those have 10,000 hit points. Current airlocks have 500. So it's a massive upgrade. Heavy airlocks have uh, 5,000 by comparison. So we need to upgrade all of our airlocks to these ones. Especially any airlocks that lead outside. Um, so we'll try and get some of these some of these placed down. But we're not going to be using too many of them. Um, now that we've kind of changed the actual ship layout. We can really start working on the capacitors today too. Try and get a feeling. So I do have a mod that apparently adds a heat consumption. Um, kind of screen or calculation or something like that. Don't know if it's working with the current patch. Um, don't know if I've especially got it all in the right load order or anything with some of the other UI changes that we've got. Um, but if we've got that going, that'd be good to get that down early. So then we can calculate the amount of heat sinks that we need um, without really pissing around too much. It might just add something to when the ship is actually powered up and in space, which means we'll have to uh, have to work on that. What we could really do with this some better power. Um, so there's this Arcotex power cell. Steel, advanced component, arco matter, and inactive zero crystal. An enormous amount of power, but it's extremely sensitive to heat and damage. Um, how much power are we talking about, though? Because we do have the arco matter that we got from the uh, the, the blackout with the things that dropped down. Um, we've got a massive amount of arco matter. I don't really know how we get more. Um, so we've got to be very careful with how we use it. Inactive zero crystals, I'm pretty sure you just grow, don't you? Um... Check out some of our hydroponics. We always swap some potatoes out for infinite power, if that's the case. Yeah, there we are. Inactive zero crystal and inactive inferno crystal. It's got 70 tiles left to go, judging by the judging by the unroof thing there. But that's basically the bulk of the the kind of monotonous stuff done now, right? All the, all the whole tiles done, besides building the entire spinal amplifier. I will admit that might take a while. Um, let's go ahead and brick this back up. I, I, I do like that they're burying people into the walls, but it will affect structural integrity. We'll have to build... We could strap the sarcophaguses to the outside. That'd be kind of fun. Anyway, um, let's start with our... Let's start with our laser gun then. Why the hell not? So, ship. We want to put down our spinal amplifier, whatever wherever it is these days. Spinal capacitor. There we are. There's no, like, upgrades to that at all, I would assume. Um... Nope, that's it. So, we could put it there and allow people to pass behind it. But like I said, we can just walk over it anyway. Um, so, we can get, like, one more amplifier's worth of damage if we push it right the way back to the bottom of the ship. And then we've got to put down these. That's four components apiece. And we're going to be building something like, what did I say, 200 and 230? It was some weird number like that. We are going to stick with the laser barrel. Um, that was the other big feedback that I got on yesterday's episode. A lot of people debating whether or not the, the, the laser barrel would be better than... Um, you know, the plasma The plasma one has a lot of benefits, but somebody said that apparently the enemy ships always try and pursue, and will always try and stay within minimums weapon range no matter what. Now, we could go for, like, rail gun or plasma gun and constantly be on the retreat. That way, they wouldn't be able to hit us so much and we'd be able to whack them. It's a legitimate strategy. Um, but to be honest, I like the idea of the laser cannon. And to be honest, with the laser cannon, because of the way they fire, we've only got to get off one good shot. And we, we, we've won, right? Um, so put down a few lights here as well, just to just to light the place up. Because, of course, we are going to be working on that center section. The last thing we want to be working in is the dark. Uh, we can make those... Oh, cold white. I think cold white suits the ship better, right? Let's put some of those on. Um, cold white. There we go. That's much nicer. Okay. Uh, let's do that all the way down. And then we'll start planning out. Hopefully, we'll just kind of focus on the spinal capacitor, I guess, for today. Try and get the actual main cannon online. Because, like I said, if that heat map mod works... Um, we'll be good with... Oh, and the living quarters, it looks a bit shit, doesn't it? I'll probably swap them over in there. That's because we've got the illuminated lamps and whatnot, which are the uh, regular... Um, which, are the, which are the warm white color. You will do something like that. Does that look better? Looks okay, I guess. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll work on this. Then if, if, if the heat map mod is working, we know exactly what we need for the um, for the heat capacitors. Well, Ice Wolf is back up. I didn't even notice. How you doing? Scratch scar, uh, permanent gunshot in the eye. So we should probably try and queue up some of the, uh, see what kind of basic eye implants we've got. Um, one A gives ac Oh, I remember these now, of course, right. Um, so the, the basic eye just gives the kind of overall accuracy, and I think that's probably the best one to go for. Um, I think I'm all right with that, yeah? That's not too bad. Fine, we'll just, we'll just chunk a bunch of those out then. Um, so basic eye, what do those need? So programmable eyes. We can make two for everybody. So go ahead and churn out 14 of those. People have people have two eyes last time I checked. And then you want a... Whoops, wrong one. You want a, a, a regular old programmable eye. Oh, and that's all it requires. Oh, that's a nice, simple, straightforward one. You don't have to make fucking 
five fingers, turn those five fingers into a hand, and I'm not even kidding, cybernetic legs. You turn a hand into a cybernetic hand and turn that into a foot. So all of these people have, like, big, long hands and big, long fingers on their feet instead of actual feet, which is just, just deeply disturbing. Return to monkey. Okay, here we go. So I assume... God, I hate this idea. I assume I'm just going to have to place them one at a time, right? We can't place that. No. Uh, we might be able to blueprint it later on, to be fair. Um, that normally allows you to bypass certain things, but I want the game to, to obviously know that this is what we're planning. Now, for the actual gun mount itself, we probably want to recess it down into the hull a little bit, don't we? Um, if we put it there and then, and then kind of curve the walls around to meet it, it gives it a good amount of defense. Um, specifically, like I said before, they would have to... They would have to kind of thread a shot down through the center. Even if we were to put it like there, it would be quite well defended. Um, we'll see how it goes. But I think that's a good idea. For these, we need steel, uranium, plastil, and advanced components. Right, okay. Well, I just started putting down some more output. Um, like I've talked about before, only one person can interact with them at a time. So the last thing we want is to have it all, um, all kind of locked up. So let's go ahead and paste... Uh, what is that? Copy with N and paste with J. Let's get a few more advanced component outputs down because we're going to need to build a lot of them. We might as well do engines at the same time because otherwise we're, we're just going to be sitting around waiting for each individual segment of the guns to be built and that's going to take friggin' years. Um, right, it says copy you next. One amplifier down. Only got to do that another 230 times and we're good. <laughs> right, okay. Um, sob that then. We'll worry about that in a minute. So, engines. For the time being, all we have, of course, is the uh, the, the basic save our ship engines. Those are, I guess, we'll just stick with the with the regular big old rocket engines, huh? And we'll just dig a dig a hole through the ship and and put them in this way. Um, to be honest, we could put it that way around. Yeah, as long as they all face the same direction, it really does not matter. Um, so we do it like that and build a big row of them facing that way. That way, we can access them a bit easier as well. Um, you know, for repairs and whatnot. So let's do it like that. Um, so we'll have to dig a hole out there, but that's okay. I, I assume they need to be, obviously, in a vacuum to function. So we'll, we'll, we'll wall them all up, and then we'll see how we get on with this. Can we, how many can we fit in? So that's fine if we want to put a wall around the edge, too. Um, and on this side, we'll do the same thing. So going from this segment upwards... How many is that going to give us, anyway? Because we needed minimum 17 to get into space. Um, it gives us 16 bollocks. Uh, how are we looking now, though, with the launch report? Oh, 21,000. We're way higher now, anyway. Um, well, bear in mind the, the, the update for the engine directionals isn't out yet. We can always just do the same thing on the other side without really much to worry about. See, this only gives us 32,000 still. Um, which is obviously doing me a significant fright, and because that I don't think is going to be enough to move the ship. Um, so we need to put a big old... Whoa, not like that. Uh, we need to do a big old hull around the edge of that one too, and basically seal it in. Um, or seal it out, I guess, is more appropriate. Um, that should do the trick, I think. Um, and of course, no one's gonna, no one's gonna hit that. So they're even, even more shielded, but no one's ever gonna be able to touch that anyway. Um, we might want to put an airlock door there as well, just to get out and... Actually, no. We, we, I don't think we'll ever need to get out that way, will we? We'll just put airlocks along the actual engines themselves if we need to do repairs. Just in case they fire up during combat or something like that and someone gets incinerated midway through swapping out some components. I feel like that would be just for safety and not a terrible plan. Um, right, so let's go ahead and deconstruct our ship hull tiles then. Go ahead and open all this stuff up. Depending on how it goes, there's nothing to say we couldn't put another kind of sphere maybe even down here a little bit more and just fill it with engines or something like that um this is just kind of a temporary testing thing to see if this will even this will even be viable um if we need more engines we just build another module onto the onto the ship somewhere else um yeah like another module off the side there and off the side there fill it with engines that would be absolutely acceptable now obviously the ships are are destroyed you count as having lost or won when when your ship bridge is destroyed or you destroy their ship bridge um so, can we place down two ships? I assume not. We can't place, like, a bridge there and a bridge there. What if we put down a minimal bridge as well? Okay, so you have to put down one, um, and that's the limit. Fair enough. Um, if that's the case, we probably want to put it, I mean, as central as possible, so it's got the least likely to be, so it's least likely to be destroyed. We could always put it there, 
and then put some serious shielding around it, like like a few more hull chunks or something like that. Um, I think that's a terrible plan. Put it right there and then put another kind of shielded hull segment. Something like that. That way we can also man it. I think that's not a terrible plan. Um, we could put a little door on there too. It took a little while, but the bridges and engines are now done, or the, the bridge, I guess. Um, so we've got a little shielded airlock on it there too. We should probably put down a chair or something. I assume they can still access that. It looks a little off-center, but it's still fine. Yeah, we're good. Um, the amplifier, taking a little while, I will admit. I've been keeping a very, very close on it. I first wanted to get a couple of them done, but this is genuinely going to take a disgusting amount of time. Something I've done very quickly is had the... Uh, I've had this churn out nothing but cam fuel, um, so it's just going to work on that basically ad infinitum now, because we need a ridiculous amount of cam fuel to move. This ship is going to be just nonsense. 22,348, and we've barely built half of what we want to build. Um, I like the design, though. It's coming along really nice, isn't it? That was quite cool. Um, yeah, this is going to be this is going to be massive. So, we've got the engines down, we've got the bridge down. What else do we need that's core for ship function? We'll put that kind of this side. Um, so we need the AI persona core, don't we? Um, so ship computer core. We could just attach onto that. Short range sensors we could just kind of tack onto this as well. Um, what else we got? Life support. Hey, that's a fair point. Um, putting that in this area would make the most sense, but I want to save a lot of this for, for heat sinks. I, I don't want to use up too much of the too much of the space for kind of this stuff. I, I mean, this crap is what I was going to say, and then I realized I'm talking about live support. Um, we could put down some capacitor arrays. Obviously, we need power plants. We still need... Christ, we still need everything. Um, right, power next, then. Let's, let's work on that one. So let's put down just our regular old ship fission reactors, because we have nothing else right now, but I assume some other stuff will come along in the future. Um, let's leave a little bit of a gap around things, just to let our people get around. Is that okay? That looks hideous. Um, how am I going to put these down in a way that makes sense? Um, we could put a few in here. We need to decentralize quite significantly, though. So if we put down... Right, let's bring that up a block. Right, let's put that there, that there, that there, and that there. Then the center, um, we could just put down a capacitor or another shield generator. Probably wouldn't hurt. Um, keep it all nicely blocked in. I know this was going to be hydroponics. We could put hydroponics around it. That's not a big deal. Um, I've got a capacitor in the center. That does fit quite nicely. Um, okay, well, let's get rid of that one first, then. We'll kind of see where we end up. What I'll probably do is put down some other fission reactors elsewhere, wherever we can fit them. Maybe if we've got room for it, a couple in here. Bear in mind, we've got the massive uh, heat sinks. So that's not going to be so relevant. I think we're not going to need too many of those. But a couple on this side, certainly... Um, just to decentralize everything. Like I said, the big the big trap we fell into last time is everything was all clustered together. So all it took was one good shot and, like, the whole power grip was out. Or, you know, whatever else we had was down. So we've got to be very careful with that. Um, it's a real shame I can't get that equal on both sides, isn't it? What else could we put there instead? Um, make more sense. Okay, there's, there's quite clearly a solution to this, you fool. Um, put the life support there and we put the short-range sensor there instead. Could put down redundant life support computer cores and short-range sensors, though, right? Those aren't those aren't limited by the... Yeah, see, we can put those down. So that's not an issue there. Um, what else we got on this one that could be useful? Crit sleep casket if we want to send Jaris Bonson to sleep, but of course that's a bit irrelevant. Salvage base is going to be pretty big. Where the hell are we going to put those? I think I'm going to need more... I'm going to need more modules, aren't I? So put a couple up there, put like a salvage bay there, a shuttle bay there, and then these back ones for more engines, probably. Sometimes these mechanites, I'm thinking, were a bad idea. The reboots, they, they had so much pain and the, the consciousness drop. I think overall, you do get a significant bonus out of it, but it's just so frequent that they'll reboot and cause health problems that, I mean, they're almost not worth using in a way for the inconvenience of it. Because if we get into a desperate situation and then we've got like three of them rebooting, we're screwed, especially like a raid, especially only with six people or seven people now as well. It's a, it's a bit of a dangerous situation to be in. Right, so we've got life support system going down. There's Dr. Don, like I said, right on cue. We need the Persona Core. That's fairly easy to come by. Let's just go ahead and manufacture another one quickly. But nine capacitors going around the edge there too, just for... Just for kind of fallback, posterity's sake. We can fill the rest of the room with hydroponics, things like that. And, and again, more heat sinks if we need it. Casto's mechs. No, thank you. We're okay. I, th I think taking on any threat willingly at this point for quests. There's no quest reward that is ever going to be worth us taking damage. What are they? Look at this. Two assaulters, two tenderfeeds, two crawlers, three flame bots, three lancers, two mammoths, two pipemen, six scythers, one climate adjuster. No, thank you. They'll send us mechanites. Oh, 12 honors. Quite good. 50 goodwill. 
<laughs> um, basically, instant allies with the uh, with the Empire there. It's not worth it, though. Combat. A shitload of gold. Wow, I never considered that. That the, the quests are, of course, going to scale to Colony Wealth too, right? I'm sure we'll eventually unlock some much stronger... Um, some, some much, much stronger capacitors and power generators. So we'll go ahead and just kind of brick this in for the time being. Again, a little bit more defense certainly wouldn't hurt. Might be the difference between life and death. But I imagine we're going to be upgrading this whole thing. Um, so I'm not going to get too attached to it. Oh, I was worried then for a second I might have fucked up and, and accidentally blocked them in. But no, look, we can refuel it even though it's blocked in on all sides. So the capacitors don't actually provide kind of kind of blocking there. You can just walk over the top of a fission reactor, which seems incredibly safe. Um, in that case, we'll leave a door open. Um, we'll leave this open for passage. I assume they can walk diagonally across that, but just in... Uh, we'll test it. Why not? Fuck it. We're going to have a very small amount of dead space, so we might as well put one of those down and then let's start putting down the capital heat sinks. My god, these things are hideously expensive. We're talking 5,000 steel each. So we've got we've only got enough in storage right now for uh, for three. Um, I might need to go and unlimit the steel on the drills in that case, but we'll see how it goes. Obviously, we need some drills on the spaceship too to be able to provide the uranium to provide anything we need for repairs. Um, we'll have a few drills and we'll just have them set to drill forever, rather than having a massive thing that we'll keep in fine control of to basically deliver resources as we need it, as much as we need kind of instantly um we'll just do it over a longer period of time instead so we use half this room for drilling half this room for hydroponics speaking of which we should probably get working on that now huh um oh, i'm not gonna write any camera install these now um so we'll just kind of stick them around the edge of the ship i guess why not no not you two i'd expect this from dr don and ironhead not from you two though what the hell happened who said what to who hocus belittled mondo's abilities this drove mondo into a rage well, to be fair, he was dead for most of last series, so I think Hocus kind of has a point. I hate to say it, Mondo. Just thinking we were a little overdue for a raid, and it turns out I was bang on the money. So we've got the Toth Toth Tothmerd Mech Hive. It doesn't look like it's that many. Where are they landing? Right there. Um, squad up, get into the ship. Uh, so I, I was going to give an update quickly on also what the hell's happened. Um, so I've, I've built this room. Obviously, we saw the capacitor vents go down. I put down some drills, put down some storage units, which are more or less just kind of placeholders. Uh, put down some cultivation for the hydroponics. Very boring stuff. Um, and that's it. Oh, I gave everyone a piano in their bedroom just to make them feel a little bit better about life. We've got down the two capital heat cores that we planned out. Genuinely, for me, that was... Uh, what time is it now? That was... Five min seven minutes past 5 a.m. It's currently 34 minutes past 5 a.m. And that's been going straight through on speed four. So it took a very long time for those things to be built. Like 20 real life minutes. Uh, just for one heat core. So bearing in mind it's going to take a bloody long time. Um, all in bots. Do us a favor. Fuck off. Anything in this vicinity is about to get absolutely rocketed. And these things are going to come online. Yep. Thought that might happen. To say that we've got, to be frank, to say that we've got 7,048,000 wealth, that's a bit of a shit raid. We might need to up the difficulty. I don't want to up the difficulty to the extent it detracts away from the space stuff, but that just doesn't... It, it feels like we're... we're I want to earn it. I, I mean, I know it seems a little ridiculous given that we've got this going on, um, but I want it to at least put up a fight a little bit, you know? And this is just not a fight at all. This is just pest control. We've done more damage to ourselves than we've done to them. I'm going to go toggle bloody fire on that. I was expecting genuinely like, I don't know, 20 pods full of centipedes. That would be appropriate for this stage of the game. Not that we've got going on right now. Good lord. Skullywags fighting hauling bots. They're better doing any bloody damage. Right, flush them out. How many we got? We got two more there. Go on, people. What a pathetic raid. Absolute shit tier. Extremely disappointed. That one's just getting wrecked by the... We didn't even get down there. <laughs> that was just the sentry gun. For fuck's sake. Oh my god. Well, there we are. Another raid. Another raid. Skillfully handled. And to be fair, I didn't even finish the learning AIs. Look at how good everyone is at building now. Because this whole series so far has just been, let's build stuff. Um, which I guess is kind of the point of every RimWorld series. But this one is, is pretty exacerbated. Um, so we've got two capital heat cores down. Again, I would love to know exactly kind of what they're capable of, but 
What's the limiting factor here? It's the fact that we're only getting one person delivering to each one at a time. There's obviously a mod that allows multiple people to deliver to it, but I was worried it might bug the game. I may actually try it, because watching one hauling bot go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth is painful. It would actually be faster to reinstall one of these next to it with steel. Um, I guess it's not a bad idea, actually. Let's do that. Fucking hell. See that we watch this bloody hauling bot till the end of time itself. Well, I think it's helped. I mean, it did then when Mondo stood on the corner and was and was churning it out there. He's taking it from that one. Are you seriously taking it from that one over to... What are you doing? He's going down further away because people are reserving these from the other side of the map too. Oh, man. Um, it would be good while we build the heat cores to just limit them to this area. I, I might just go get the mod that allows multiple people to level to one thing. Otherwise, this is, this is painstaking. <laughs> because... In between them actually genuinely taking the steel out of this and moving it into this, um, and potentially also moving it into the other one, it is reserving it again from someone else, especially with with all these hauling bots. So even this is a very much a, a, a foolproof, not foolproof strategy. Um, it's a very foolish strategy. There we go. Now most of my days are not going to be just sitting around waiting for people to haul. Granted, it's still going to take a very, very long time, uh, but it means we can get everybody simultaneously to work on the same bloody thing, which is a phenomenal upgrade um i really should reinstall the hauling bots as well shouldn't i maybe get them into this maybe get them actually into the ship itself into the center section let's get those moved over that should help expedite things a lot because it means they're not running back and forth and back and forth to charge up look at that oh my god it's so much faster now shit having all of these people being able to deliver simultaneously without one person reserving it is a complete game changer we might actually get off the planet sometime within the next month brilliant Okay, so I don't know how many of these things we're going to need to build, but we will stick down a shitload of them. Um, I haven't really considered how I'm going to cool, I'll be honest with you. I've just started just sticking them down because I'm kind of hoping uh, the ambient temperature, if we don't ever heat the ship, will probably be extremely low. Uh, how could we do this? I haven't really thought so at all. Um, my God, you see how fast he delivered that then, Dr. Don. Uh... We might need to build a separate chamber, like a cooling chamber. I've just been sticking them down. Oh, you can't even fucking reinstall them either. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my bad. I didn't really think this went through. Um, yeah, we, we need a way to cool them, and I don't know how the hell we're going to do that. We still have the frozen pillars from the pillar mod, as far as I recall. Yeah, we do. Um, which will work, I guess, fine. Um... We need a way to vent it outside, and of course, with the ship being three blocks thick, that's a little harder than it used to be. We could vent out past the engines. I don't know if that will work. I don't see why not, because that's just the vacuum of space, and I mean, that's probably the best cooler we could ever hope for, if it works. Um, so we probably want to do something like that and just vent it straight out, right? God, I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> I have absolutely no idea how we're going to do this, but this whole room might end up being minus 200, hopefully. A strange impression, these ship vents aren't working right. 18 degrees inside, 7 degrees, sorry, minus 8 outside, with <laughs> 32 ship vents? Uh, something's not quite working as intended there, I feel. Okay, let's try shut these airlock doors. Um, bear in mind, they're airlocks, so this should force the temperature down, right? No, it's fucking not. Are these things already churning out that much heat that, that even all these vents can't stabilize a single reactor? Or two reactors in this case. Oh, there we go. Look, the temperature's dropped by a degree. Well, that's concerning. Um, When we're in space, obviously, a little bit colder than, than the Arctic uh, last time I checked. Uh, but we will throw down a couple of frozen columns anyway. Uh, I think in this room in particular. No, it's actually not that warm. Maybe this is what all the heating capacity is going to. It's keeping these things cool. I'm entirely short. Mondo. I mean, these are an airlock, right? So if we do Mondo through there. Uh, ooh, I should have, shouldn't rephrase that. If we put Mondo through there, it should. Oh, yeah. There we go. Fucking hell. Right. Slightly different. Oh, no. It's only 84 in that room. It's 24 in there. And then it's 15 in here. Temperature's dropping slightly now. Was it genuinely all the heat in there? Well, it's stuck at 84. And it's not going anywhere else by the looks of it. So that's okay. 
25. Got to make sure it's not too hot for the crops to grow. But hey, but that, I mean, that doubles up as kind of a nice thing. Um, when we get into space, it will be too cold for the crops to grow. But I'm not complaining about that too much. Right, okay. So in here, I'm just going to get frozen column central. Because we've started placing those things down. And they're a ball like to move. Um, if it's cold, it's cold. So be it. People aren't going to be in here very often. In theory, they shouldn't even need to be over here very often. Christ, we can build those fast now. This mod, uh, I mean, it was obviously the, uh, it's just the low mod, by the way. Um, phenomenal. Like, actually a game changer. And again, it, the, the limiting factor should not be, we shouldn't have difficulty coming from how slow we are at hauling things. I feel like it's not really the point. Um, we are out of steel. So that, that was pulling it from the sorting unit, I believe. The actual steel. Yeah, so if we go ahead and swap the steel outputs back to, what was the other one again? Uh, just digital storage unit? Yeah, that's it. Okay, copy that one down to there. Oh, I've, what I've done with the storage on the ship to avoid the issue we had over there is... Um, whenever you're ready. Digital storage unit. There we go. Um, is we've got a storage unit. And then we'll get hauling bots moving them into one for raw materials, one for manufacture, one for items, buildings, that type of thing. So they're spread out a bit easier. Um, that way we can also grab items from specific things. And then whenever we produce anything, we dump it back in the storage unit and the hauling bots will deal with the rest. That way we're hopefully not going to get so many overflows as we did before. How are we doing with the engines then? So only 14,000 units of chem fuel. Fucking hell. It's so much faster, though. Look at that. Absolutely incredible. My god, why did I not have this? So I, I specifically remove things like pick up and haul, uh, share the load. Uh, I clearly have enough. That, you know, the things that affect hauling, because last series it had a bit of a detrimental effect. But this time around, it's, it's essentially important. Uh, you know, but it's, it's, it's essential. It's essentially essential. Because without it, we would genuinely be here for fucking hours building these. Um... Especially if you want to get enough to cool the giant gun. Speaking of which, how much progress we got on the giant gun today, you're wondering? 13 out of the 230. It's very slow going, but now the hauling bots move over, to be fair. It should be a little bit quicker. I mean, more to the point, if we get the heat capacity high enough, who cares about cooling? We could just store all that heat and then bleed it over a really long period of time. Because again, I think we just need one shot from this gun. So if we max it out with one shot, who cares? Because the battle will be over there and then, and then we can just... Uh hopefully just kind of kind of coast on on passive cooling for a while i mean again there, there are some pretty end game cooling solutions from the sounds of it given it talks about that zero cooler or whatever it was i'm gonna just let our guys go but wild for a little bit and and get all of these things built we'll move some of these columns so we can get some um put in better places and we'll just fill this room with as many heat sinks as possible and this will be our heat sink room uh and our bridge of course we've got a clear path over to that to be fair we could take it one step further and brick it all in as well um which to be honest wouldn't make too little sense there um if we put the door there instead actually kind of prefer that hopefully they can walk over the heat sinks i assume they can i don't know Let's see yeah they can oh that's that's perfect that's excellent. So that means we can put a door there and they can still move on with their lives. And it means the cooling's all nicely nicely blocked in. You know, it's not going to leak out through these. It's not, well, not easily. And it's not going to get through into this section either. Um, we could probably afford to close those vents then or, or remove them entirely. Oh, the steel. We're down to our last thousand steel. <laughs> that is absolutely insane. I thought this was insanity, but evidently it's not quite insane enough. Well, shit. The game's beating us on this one. We we're almost there, though. Like, a lot of them have a good few thousand. Some of them are basically already fit. Like, that one's pretty much done now. That's insane. How are we doing on the Plastale front? Plastale front's pretty good as well. I think, that it, once again, it's the hauling speed that's the limiting factor here. Because a lot of them are basically ready to go. Wow. So, that's going to give us a total of what? Like, uh, 11 plus 15. Uh, 26, if my maths is right. It's going to give us 26 capital heat cores. I don't know quite how much heat that's going to allow us to... Uh, kind of subsume, but bearing in mind the size of our freaking gun, when I ever get it built, it's gonna be... We need a lot. We need as much as possible here. Good progress today. Uh, like, very good progress. We've got the bridge stuff, the essential ship stuff done. Um, how are we looking on the launch report? Just need the chem fuel. Technically, this thing is space-worthy. Um, you've got plenty of room over here for more stuff, but I, I think it's gonna have to be fission reactors and capacitor banks, again, to kind of decentralize the ship somewhat, um, to get a load more of those down, it works doubles up as heating too we, we get, you know there's a lot of good reasons for that um so we'll probably go ahead and stick those in here uh help keep this area of the ship a bit warmer so we'll see how it goes thank you all for watching thank you for bearing with the the scale of this series i think is the right word it is it is going to be a slightly slow series to actually get up into orbit but we can achieve some pretty ridiculous stuff and of course there is unfortunately a limited amount of time i've got in each day to uh to do this this episode only today Hey, only took uh, three and a half hours to record this one. So with editing and everything else, 
chopped an hour off of yesterday's episode, so that's quite nice. Thank you in the meantime to our executive copy producers, without which I wouldn't be able to sit here and dedicate six or seven hours a day to Rimworld. Thank you to Darkus, Odie, Sonic Cooperetto, Emily, Moira, Mythomatic, Big Weeb, Layla, Scarlet Bard, Jan, Boyan Gun, Juncture On, Asra and the Cat. My name isn't Dio for their spot. The executive producer tears on coffee. That is the end of our coffee list for this month. So I'll be I'll be redoing the list. I'm not going to be removing any names because, of course, if I said I want everybody to um, basically not back on coffee this month, ready for when we join Patreon, uh, or rejoin Patreon, I should say, now they've solved all their problems coming November. So for those of you whose subscriptions, whatever, lapse, don't worry about it. Obviously, I'm not going to remove any names, but I make sure that all the people that have been missed because of the fuckery that's going on at Coffee, um, I make sure all of you guys are added on to this month as well. So feel free to send me a heads up Discord, um, Patreon if you want to ping me there and just say, hey, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm still around or, or whatever. We'll find a way to sort it out. Um, but then, of course, we'll be back to the automated lists after that, making my life ten times easier. Thank you for bearing with me. And a thank you as well to Prometheo, Deadly Kitten Hunt, Infectious, Number 5, L Mr. Streamers, Little Slut, Matthewson T, Mantle, Argus, Dommies, Big Chungus, Varlord, Mayo, Tempeh, Aka, and you at home for watching. See you all tomorrow for some, I mean, hopefully finishing the main gun.